everybody. As you can see, I'm with the great Marco Mineman. Who? Uh, oh, that's me, okay. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> he accepted to be a guest of the Drum Brother, and we're going to have a nice interview and nice chat with him now. Good morning. So, Marco, I was completely blown away by your DVD when I saw it some years ago, and uh, I you. really learned a lot uh, from your concept on, uh, of uh, playing on vamps. Mm -hmm. How do you, did you develop that, and um, has it something to do with your playing other instruments also? Yes, very much. <clears throat> I want to address this to all the people out there, because I started playing guitar at the same time I started playing drums. And um, before I even played guitar, when I was five years old, I started playing organ, two manual organ with foot bass. That's why I came up with all this kind of, you know, high feathers and all this stuff, I guess, you know, because stuff. <laughs> I always, to me, it was always more listening to music, to the bands, rather than listening to, to certain drummers. And that's kind of strange because people always ask me, like, you know, who are you influences? And I always say, like, well, I listen to Frank Zappa's music, you know, and my favorite bands were Queen, or still are, and, and Led Zeppelin, The Police, and Miles Davis, and, 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 you know, and Zappa, of course, and all this kind of stuff. And when I wrote, started writing my own music, I heard these high patterns actually in my head, and I thought, like, well, you know, if people play this with, with their hands, or in a double, you know, kick, or, like, have two kick drums, why don't I try, like, playing a paradiddle, or, like, a double paradiddle, you know, between, like, kick drum and hi-hat. You know? And then put other stuff on top. I want to spill the coffee here, you know. Okay, you know, but, but... And, you know, and then I tried to first of all play it, you know, on the regular drum kit, and then kind of thought, like, well, what if I put, like, a gong drum over here, and, you know, use it as a kick drum replacement, or something like that, and then play, like, just, you know, all the other patterns, just with hi-hats, between hi-hats, and then... You know, that's, that opened an, uh, a whole another universe. And meanwhile, I'm able to incorporate it also into band playing, as you could have heard with the aristocrats. Yeah. And, um, and it works. It works quite, quite musical. It was a long way. It was a long way. It took me years and years. It took me over 15 years to be that comfortable that I just sit behind the drums and go like, okay, let's make it sound good. <laughs> How can you make that musical, though? Well, you mean that concept? Yeah, I mean, I uh, think you it's, know, you, yeah. can, you, you ob obviously can do it really well. Mm -hmm. uh, some people get caught into the math stuff. Oh, that, that happens to me all the time, but meanwhile I kind of know where to go or where I want to go. It's like, you know, at, at some point it was like, um, not only the decision to play these patterns, but also to pick first of all the right, the right instruments, you know, that I, that I want to hear and kind of place them actually the right way as well. Do this right now, so you can see me still here. <clears throat> For example, um, I kind of decided uh, on some of the, my older videos or DVDs. You can see that I had like a little foot snare on, mm -hmm. the, on yeah. the side, you know, or I had like you know whatever, like maybe a cowbell or some other, you know, um, stacked cymbals. And then I and then I looked at the DVD and then I thought like, well, you know what? I actually don't like that sound at all. So I got rid of that foot snare and I thought like, well, I'm pretty much a rock drummer and I love being a rock drummer. I'm like a rock drummer with like other influences with like you know capacity or something like that i don't know or you know I, i'm interested in in technical in, in the technical aspect and i want to you know kind of spread it out as much as possible but always use it like in a very musical way but i'm more of a guy you know like when it comes down to the point i like like a cracky snare drum a fat kick drum you know and uh melodic toms you know and cutting cymbals and 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 i'm pretty much um a player that likes to play everything on a rock sound, more like a rock sound. Yeah. Just, just love it. And um, so basically, my setup is still like you know, uh, 13 inch height here, 14 inch height over here. I got rid of the 8 inch. Sometimes I play it that I used to have over here. Then I um, stripped down my cymbals as well. I have um, usually like five cymbals: splash over here, crash over there, another crash over here, another china or a crash over here, and a right cymbal over there. Yeah. And uh, five toms, which is like 8, 10, 12, or sometimes I use like 10, 12, 8. Mm -hmm. uh, four, um, meanwhile, 16, 18, and a 22 inch gong drum, and sometimes double kick. Either way, like when I play with a metal band, like two, time, uh, two times yeah. 24. Um, uh, we did this with Eddie Jobson with UK with that band, you know, so we play like, you know, basically a two 24 inch kicks. It just looks great and sounds good and it's just cool. <laughs> but um, I'm fine also, like with the 22 or 23 inch that DW makes, oh, actually, nice. with like a double pedal. So that's fine too, yeah. Awesome. But um, your question was actually how to make it sound musical. Then. Yeah. <laughs> so first of all, pick like the instruments 
and then again, kind of you know, make it make it sound musical. That's that's all up to you. You know, like in, I can play the most complex pattern and make it sound like boring or something like that. You know, like if I would play like I play like let's say um, uh, whatever, throw something at me or, or let's say like uh, three sixteenth groupings or whatever, like 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 something like that. And I have like let's say like you know two different groupings of that. Like let's say the first one plays. Second one, let's say, plays the off. Ba -da -dum, ba -da -dum, ba -da -dum. So we have like. And then we have like, let's say, with a kick drum, um, let's say like a boom, 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 boom. So, you know, if I want to kind of sound, make it more, uh, sound more melodic, you know, I kind of feel like over the toms. Try to kind of you know um, you know get some flow and some groove going, and then kind of bring it to the instrument and kind of you know create some patterns. It's like writing a song, you know. Yeah. You just do that, you know, and 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 it's the same, you know, with my patterns that I do that, that I you know do with my feet. So I would come up with um, let's say a pattern. Let's 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 you know create something on the spot, like um, blah, single drag or something like that, or like. Oh my God! Let's see. see these other things, you know, just creating on the spot. And this is what I love, you know. Sometimes I totally mess it up, and you will witness it. Sometimes it works. <laughs> so let's see, like, um, okay, let's let's bring that to the feet, for example. Uh, something on top and kind of create a melody maybe like even like you know like a modulation thing three over four or whatever anything that sounds good it's even like a challenge not to play in this drum kit you know just say I have to, you know yeah. I'm not used to play that we had this today in the clinic and it was actually really fun um, but you know this is this is what it's all about I think really creating let's just put like a random cue Like that, you know. I try to kind of, you know, build it up slowly, you know, and then kind of, you know, like, you know, add one element to the other and kind of make it, you know, an entire um, bulk of <laughs> patterns, you know, that kind of come together in a musical composition way. It's like playing a guitar chord or something like that, you know, and kind of strum it nicely. <laughs> Actually, you know, man, your uh, your approach to music really inspired me, and uh, I built oh, a, a whole system of myself uh, on playing on odd times. Oh, thanks awesome! To your uh, your way. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thanks to your uh, your way that, that I saw in, in that DVD. So thank you. I'm really thankful. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, and I love you having here now and, oh. and seeing you play. You know. Oh, thank you. Well, that's, that's awesome. My pleasure. I always I always like playing. <laughs> You are the king of of independence. Uh, <laughs> no, I I I, I want to be the king of creating my own music, you know, and make people happy with it. That's yeah. that's you know that's what I and I want to be you know I, I just want to give energy and get good energy back, you know, from the people. You, you know? do, you do actually. And that's that's my mission, you know. But um, what are you practicing these days after all these years of that, all this kind of but, stuff? But um, that what you just saw. But you know, of course, you know, since drums are. Um, well, yeah, I write a lot of music, you know, I have like, what, 16 solo CDs out or so, you know, yeah. and I play all the instruments in these ones, so for me, this is like the biggest learning process, always, like, you know, just, I never like to repeat myself, I always try to be somewhere else in a few years, so if you see my drum DVDs when you watch these, or if you see me playing, I'm, I'm always doing, incorporating new, you know, <laughs> styles and stuff like that, I never really like to play the same shit, you know, yeah, yeah. well, some things I do, you know, like, I know, for example, like, you know, people love, you know, Kind of stuff. I, you know, in the drum solo, I sometimes, you know, most of the time, kind of have like a feature and kind of. But even these, I change up sometimes, yeah. you know. But I know that showmanship is important, you know, and uh, and I like it. It's it's just great, you know, when you're um, uh, in front of an audience to interact with the audience, you know, because you're not alone. You're alone on stage, you know, but you're not alone in the room because that's why you play. It's like an exchange of energy. It really is. It's like you know, being behind the stage, you know, and there's nobody actually in the audience. 
you can you can feel that you're kind of you know relaxed and everything's cool okay get ready for sound check but you can feel the the vibe you know if like there's like still a curtain and you know there's like two thousand people behind it you can feel like the energy you know what I mean you go like all right you know and you go out and just you know and just give you know everything with full passion and I think this is like such a cool thing that money can't buy you know money you know it, see when I was like you know 19 or whatever you know and I, and I didn't have any money couldn't even afford a car I was actually living in a practice room and uh, I loved it you know because I was creative I could do something and I had a talent for something or writing music that you know that I was incredibly proud of and, and happy with you know no money could buy me that you know and and I'm still the same, you know. Well, even though I have a house or something like that, and and now or in the studio and stuff like that, I do the same things. My my schedule doesn't look really really much different, you know what I mean. And uh, so you know that's that's something actually that is really priceless, you know, that you can put, you know. So like like your own creativity, talent, and uh, energy exchange uh, between people. That's the most important thing. And I think the greatest feeling is is, is like uh, <clears throat> just achieving something that you that you play and that wasn't there before, that is like the big bang of the universe that all of a sudden, you know, like you started playing like, you know, these higher patterns with like, you know, all kinds of combinations and, and there's all of a sudden this one pattern, you know, that you kind of, you know, just, just play it and, and you're incredibly proud of it and you want to show it to the people yeah. and then you see like if it works, you know, and all of a sudden the people start to like it, that's a great feeling, you know, that's an accomplishment, you know, and I'm very interested in that and so, but mainly what I'm working on is like, um, um, just the writing music, you know, that, that gives me a good feeling, that makes me happy. Just being creative, put something out, you know. That stuff never leaves you. Like, that, that stuff is always there with you, you know. So uh, you can call it your own, and that's something also, like, for people in the world to see and kind of remember, you know. You know, I don't know if I want to re remember it for that or whatever, but you, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's yeah, like no, something you did with them that made a statement or something. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I'm, I'm, you know, happy <laughs> about that. Okay. Go to markominiman.com. M I N N E M A N N Miniman German with two N at the end. Uh, go to iTunes; you can find me there as well, and um, and come to my shows and well check out my stuff that I have. Please find me. See, that's that's a good thing on the web. You can find me on the web or on Facebook. That is the thing. I I was really actually happy that the record industry actually broke down because you know when when I was like always kind of you know had to rely on all those major companies you know with all the acts and bands I was there actually I was at. Those were the people that told you what to play and what not to play, and me. And I always believed, like, no, 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 no. You know what I do? A certain amount of people really want to hear that. The people are not the dumbest. The industry think, you know, because I remember like records that Queen put out, like jazz with songs like Mustafa oh, or, yeah, yeah. or Bicycle Race, mm. which is incredibly complex and kind of out and weird. And people loved it. And also, like modern artists are like like Radiohead when they put out Kid A, for example, you know, which went to number one, which is such an experimental album. You know, and Zappa used to be popular as well. Come on, you know. And this is like the thing I'm also like incredibly happy and, and proud of that, you know, we, for example, with my band The Aristocrats actually, can make all the music we like and the people show up. The people show up. Like if you have if you if you really give something honestly and with passion to the people, they will receive it, you know. And and, and, th and this audience is they won't leave you as, as quick. It's not like you know. It's it's not like a high school audience, you know, where some girls actually like you know one guy in the band, and in a few years they like a different guy, you know, something like that. This is like you know they know what you're doing. They like they know. They choose it. Yes, they choose. They know like oh shit, he is doing a parallel between the highest. You know, it's like you know not like because you know how many times you know it, does it happen to you like you play a gig and then you know somebody you know comes to you and goes like. And you're kind of really happy that he liked the drum solo or she or whatever, and he goes like, "Oh, that was really awesome, man!" You know, you you totally remind me of Ringo Starr, you know. And you think like, "No, no, I, do, I don't." But thank you, I know what you mean. Okay, you like the drum solo, you know. I got a lot of times when somebody compared me to, uh, well, not Ringo Starr, but what do you say? What was it again? He was like, "Man, you know, you you're totally like Keith Moon, you know. You remind me totally of Keith Moon, or you and Carl Palmer, you know." It's like, mm, "Thank you, I guess." <laughs> No, I don't know, it's cool. Um, I got, you know, of course, you know, when I started with that kind of thing, and I worked with Terry and Chad as a trio. That was very awesome, you know, because, of course, like Terry, you know, like, you know, he had, uh, he has this entire kind of orchestral view of the yeah. drum set. And that was actually really, yeah, like in the mid-80s when he started it, that was, that was actually very nice, you know. And I appreciate also, like, Chad's and Vinny's playing and, and uh, you know, these, these were the guys I listened to, all the, you know, when I listened to Zappa, you know, stuff like that. Or Buddy Rich, of course, for his... You know, showmanship, or, or yeah, just like you know, just to control. I mean, you know, it's just fantastic that, that there's um, this is this is like something. Um, I mean, everybody plays like a single stroke role, 
you know, but he played a single stroke role and made everybody look at this fucking single stroke role and they couldn't take the eyes off the fucking single stroke role. Sort of my language in German, I don't know what fuck means. So, um, <laughs> geez. And um, you know what I mean, but I just like the execution and, and that's what I'm interested in playing in drum Fashion. shows as well. Yeah, just like, you know, giving, you know, like like just some information. I just, you know, hey, if somebody just... It's easy to play place, math, and, it's oh, gotta... hard to play art. Right. Uh, well, you know, I don't know. It's, it, it just either way you have that, you know, or you don't. You, you you have to be you have to identify yourself with that, I guess, you know. And uh, that happens with experience. This is like another thing that I told the clinic today. There are some things you only get with experience. Like people can ask me a lot of questions, you know, and then sometimes I go like, well, you know what? Um, this one um, uh, girlfriend of, of of mine, and and, and she's um, <laughs> this one girlfriend of mine. That sounds good. <laughs> uh, a girl I know, a girl I know, like, um, and she's she's really cool. And she's very intellectual, and we always have these discussions. She's she's into about poetry and all this kind of stuff, and likes to discuss about like you know different kind of course that you can change with like you know interview and stuff. And I go like, you know what? I really, you know, I'm exactly the opposite. I don't agree with this, you know, like you can kind of discuss things to death, you know, but you have to come up with something. Just be creative. Don't identify yourselves all the time what other people say, you know, like, oh, look, this guy said that, you know, I think it's great, you know, for kind of, you know, absorbing things and kind of, you know, making them your own, but I'm always into, into, into being creative, you know, into kind of having something that you present and go like, here, no question asked. This is it, you know, analog there in your face. Yeah. <laughs> So thanks for sharing your experience with us. It, it was an amazing pleasure having you oh. and uh, being here with you today. Oh. Well, thank you very much.